this video is for anyone who's over 50 and thinking about dating again. Um, we're going to ask each other three questions, part of our three question series, three questions about dating over 50. How do you market yourself when you're over 50? Well, I can only speak from my experience, right? Um, I did. I went on one of the dating apps. Actually, I tried a few others, uh, but the one I settled on was Bumble. And I just tried to be authentic. Um, other times when I had attempted to go on dating apps, maybe when I was a little bit younger, uh, the attitude was um, maybe, oh, say things that people want to hear. You know, <laughs> like other people will say like, oh, I love long hikes and, you know, midnight strolls and whatever. Um, but you know, as I got older, it's like, uh, there's, there's less time, no, no playing around and pretending you're, you're not who you are. So, um, I just authentically said things that I was interested in, um, things that I'd accomplished, um, um, in my life, things that I w yet wanted to do. That's what I put in my profile. Um, I chose as many descriptors on Bumble as fit me. Um, and I made sure I was feeling really great when I did my profile picture. I didn't try to make myself look different than I was. Um, so I just hoped that my authenticity would, would shine through. Um, but yet, you know, tried to make the profile sound, um, you know, sound interesting within, within my authentic self. So that's how I did it. Well, I'm going to share what I saw when I got onto Bumble. There she is, uh, 58, all in pink, adorable teacher at theater arts, um, <laughs> And um, clearly this worked for you, this marketing ploy, just being you. Yeah. And this was just like a regular day at Lucky Duck Ca Cafe. I used to meet there with my writing friends every day and we would, uh, you know, get coffee and write. I was working on my dissertation at the time. And yeah, I had the barista, her name was Yoko, take a picture of me and you can't see it, but with my favorite cup. They, they had these great cups there and it was my favorite cup. And it happened to be pink matching my shirt. Adorable. And then like you were saying, you just included some information about who you are and what's important to you. Exactly. Yeah. And what you wanted. And what I wanted. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I liked that. I liked that a lot. I think it was really important that you put that you were interested in a relationship here. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think sometimes people hedge sort of, they don't want to, exclude people who might not be interested in a relationship or might not be interested in them for that reason. But I figured that's what I'm interested in. Not to say that I was going to settle or fall in love with the first person who responded. I happened to though, actually, <laughs> although I'd had a lot of conversations on Bumble before that, let's be honest, but um, before, before I met you, babe, but um, yeah, yeah, I was, I'm, I was interested. I'd said for a few years, interested in someone to build a life with. So yeah, wanted to put that out there. Mm-hmm. There's another picture. Yeah, it's just a goofy little picture. Thought it made me look, uh, I don't know what I thought it made. I don't know what I was thinking. Adorable. But, uh... <laughs> I actually think it's important um, because a lot of people don't want to do this. I think it's important, especially for women, to put at least two pictures on there because nobody wants to feel like an object, right? Uh, which is what it feels like when you're posting pictures of yourself, I think. But it's important to kind of give people different views into who you are. Mm -hmm. So exactly. Yeah. yeah. I actually put a lot more than two. You did. Yeah. And I appreciated that. And so I think, I think that's a good point though, at least two, right? Because it shows a certain level of confidence. You're not sort of taking, Oh, this, this is my best glamour shot that I did headshot or something. Mm -hmm. Um, and then for me too, just that authentic thing. I want, that was me in like a, a you know, a satin kind of do-rag on my head. You know, I was like, just kind of wanted to show like, this is who I am. This is my authentic um, self. So, yeah. Yeah. Love it. How do you make sure you're not settling? Well, that goes along with um, sort of just not, uh, not, not making not making plans with just anybody who who responds not kind of just going out for the sake of kind of giving your giving your heart over to um for the sake of just like oh i finally gotten a date especially not having dated for a while right um that helped me not settle i was very lonely yet i was living fine and 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 you know building a life by myself so um there was no need to settle for anyone who was like the absolute you know most awesome 
a person that I could get, you know? Um, so what, how do you, that I'm not really answering it. Am I sort of just have confidence in yourself, have confidence in your worth and, um, just be yourself, you know, and that's a way to help yourself not settle. I think sometimes um, one way that we settle is kind of making up stories about who we are when we begin dating and then try to turn ourselves into someone the other, someone the other person might like, which indicates they're not someone who would like us on our own and we're, they're probably not someone who we'd like on their own, right? So just that authenticity, that being honest about what you want and who you are uh, I think that helped me not so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good answer. <laughs> All right. How do you deal with your friends and family's opinions about your dating? So um, you want to know about whether or not there are red flags going on that you're not seeing. So I did elicit the, um, the help of my uh, friends and family. Like, hey, here's what I'm seeing. She seems wonderful. Here's the sort of things that we're doing. Um, what do you think? Are you seeing any red flags that I'm not? Uh, and in that same vein, though, if I had friends who, which I did have some, unfortunately, who uh, seemed uninterested in it or just like, oh, you know, you're dating. Oh, you know, kind of an attitude of either be careful or sort of like a muted excitement for me. Um, I just like left them out of the equation. You know, mm. I didn't want um, other people's negativity that had nothing to do with the relationship to cover color my experience. Some people, maybe they were out of the dating game for a while, or maybe they were in a relationship that they weren't enjoying. So um, that would make them more negative about mine. And I didn't want anything that just wasn't absolutely beautiful to touch this, right? Or absolutely real to touch this. So I just sort of kept them out of the equation. I didn't like hide my relationship from them, but I didn't elicit their opinion. And if they, you know, offered it, like I had one friend who said, when I said that I'd fall in love with you, um, said, oh gosh, that's fast. Um, you know, I just sort of like, just ignored those opinions, didn't let them count in any of my decision-making. Um, and, you know, maybe their opinions of friends who I would have uh, trusted on other matters, but this matter of the heart, I wasn't going to let anybody's negative opinion that wasn't accurate, you know, was based on, was colored by their own fear and apprehensions or their own, what was going on with them. I wasn't gonna let it touch it, so yeah. I, I, you know, I, I'm very cerebral in a way. I just like, I think it through. Right. And so I did a lot of thinking to, um, to make the right choice. My heart was in it, but a lot of thinking of what was going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you market yourself? When you're over 50? Well, I think it's really important when you're over 50 to, uh, lean towards authenticity, like you were saying, because, it's not like you have youth going for you. You, know, you got to really just be real. And I feel like people really appreciate that. Um, I did a lot more online dating than Dev had to. But it, it, I learned a lot along the way. Yeah. So let, let me share my old Bumble profile while we talk about it. Yeah. There you go. So there's Sue. She's 57. Uh, life coach and content creator at Hopeful Tribe, it says. <laughs> and there's my gradual school. And my uh, profile reads sort of like a poem, sort of. Yeah, kind of like a poem, kind of like the beginning of a conversation, uh -huh. you know? Uh, okay, maybe kind of a dramatic conversation. <laughs> sure, sure. What moves me? <laughs> I actually ripped it off of another person's profile. No, you I didn't. Was so moved by oh it. my gosh, that's awesome. I said that's really good because my experience is that there's so many options on those sites. So you want something that's going to pull people in <laughs> and make them go, "Who wow. is this person?" Right. So I. I, I stole the what moves me part, but then I filled in the blanks with stuff that's true about me. Um, and I know that I'm an unusual and rather intense person, <laughs> but I want people to feel that up front because I don't want to waste anybody's time, right? Or I didn't want to. Now I don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> and... Um, and yeah, and this is the kind of stuff that I think sort of uh, 
distinguishes me uh, from other people that might be out there, right? So um, waking up and being grateful, um, being of service, um, knowing I'm healing while healing uh, or helping others to heal themselves, things like that um, are really important for me to put out there. And then again, multiple pictures, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of my politics. Um, yeah, it was really important to me that the person I find be mostly healthy, you know? And if you recognize most of the pictures came from my filming different videos on Hopeful Tribe. <laughs> and uh, it's a little bit about uh, my music taste, too, because music's really important to me. So, um, yeah, I guess not too different from you. I just was yeah. really forward with who I was. Yeah. The things on your profile that I really love. So, so as, as people know from a previous video we did, it's like, as I embarked on this dating journey, I, I initially just swiped on anybody with a profile and a face. So it was important to me that she had filled out her profile, you know, <laughs> and, you know, and that she had a good face. And so, and I liked that she was near my age. Um, and then after she, Sue swiped on me and it was time to respond, then I did go back and read the profile. So, what really caught my eye was that uh, the vulnerability and loveliness of helping others heal um, while healing herself. You know, it's this acknowledgement of like, hey, I'm a work in progress and, you know, and I want to help others, you know, and I just love that. Um, and then the other thing that caught my eye um, very much was there's this one thing where it says like, if you had one superpower, what could it be? Sue filled out the whole thing, right? So, the, so there was one question, if you had one superpower, if you had superpowers, what would it be? And Sue was like, who says I don't? That, that was her response. I was like, oh my gosh, she sounds awesome. Um, and yet, when when she had responded to me, she said something like, oh, we have so much in common. Her profile, once I read it, didn't sound like we had much in common. So I just responded back with like, let's hear it, you know? And then, you know, she in our first conversation, heard more about what we did have in common. But yeah, I loved the authenticity and the vulnerability of it, really. I'm surprised to know, like, oh, that one, that first line, that's what got you going and you got it from elsewhere. But um, yeah, it was really good. It was a really good profile, really good way to market yourself. Yeah. Lean into your strengths. You have them. <laughs> Share them. <laughs> um, and then how do you how do you make sure you're not settling? Well, for me, I had a very uh, prescribed kind of screening process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. while I was online dating. And if you didn't pass one step of it, then you were just eliminated. From the search. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I did well in the job interview. I think so. <laughs> I think so. Um, yeah, that's how I did it because I found myself wasting way too much time on these apps um, yeah. and before the apps <laughs> on websites. Um meeting people who would never be good matches for me, you know? And actually, most of the people I dated weren't good matches, right? But um, as I got older, I think what really helped me to keep from settling was just sticking to the, um, to the screening process. And maybe that would be a good follow-up video to this video mm -hmm, the screening is process. the screening process how i managed to keep from wasting my time with people or i should write a book called a thousand first dates right because that's what it is <laughs> yeah yeah there were questions that she just sort of wove into to the first few dates you know yeah and and i I didn't, I didn't know that that's what was happening until she sort of like share, maybe date two. She was saying like, yeah, no, I have questions that I'm asking and, um, you know, and I'm, I'm going to, I'll share a copy with you. If you'd like, you know, just, and it was really great. There were simple questions, but there were questions that she needed to know. One of them is in what you said about the wanting to make what you said on your profile about wanting someone to be healthy, um, in mind, body, and spirit, spirit. One of them kind of pertained to that in a way, wanting someone who is mostly healthy. Yeah. They were, they were good questions. I hope we do follow up with a video on mm -hmm. those. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. And screen people thoroughly. Yes, indeed. And so um, <laughs> last question, how do you deal with uh, your friends and family's opinion while you're dating? Oh, wow. So 
uh, my friends were always super supportive of my dating because they know me and they know like I am happiest when I'm coupled and um, yeah, it was a thing that I was really determined to get right <laughs> before I die. I said, <laughs> before I die, I'm going to have a successful long-term relationship. And uh, uh, they were super supportive, uh, even to the extent that, like, I basically didn't talk to people for months. And nobody gave me a hard time, right? Nobody said, oh, where you been, mama? <laughs> you know? They were like, no, we know she's in love. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah my friends were super supportive but um where i got a little pushback were with some of my uh children adult children <laughs> really i didn't abandon any small babies to come move in with my girlfriend i just um have these adult children and i did get a little bit of pushback i think not so much about her or about our relationship, but about what that meant for our relationship. Like, clearly, I was going to be less available. So, uh, yeah, I felt a little pushback there. And I, I just had conversations with them about it. What are you going to do? Like, you know, what am I supposed to sit around and wait for you to call me once a month? What am I? <laughs> <laughs> I got to live my life, you know. And honestly, I think adult children... Um, are at an advantage when their mothers are happily involved in a relationship, right? Because then they're not, you know, entirely um, dependent on them, waiting for them all the time to make holiday plans or whatever, or to help them out when they need it. So I think it's a good thing, guys. I think <laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And my, my dad found love late in life, as well, as you know. And, and yeah, there was some pushback from us with, with him and his girlfriend, like sort of not understanding the, oh, wait, what, you're in love? You're getting married? What? Who does that at your age? Now I get it. But, you know, it was, uh, yeah, it was very, very, very hard, especially I have an older brother who he, he yeah, it took him forever if he ever did really get over it. You know, it was just sort of tough to, to, to deal with it. And I don't know. I guess you're right. It sort of changes the relationship, changes your perception of the parent. But you know, I guess the main thing is so long as uh, the people who are in the relationship just do what they have to do and just keep on loving <laughs> those, <Yeah. laughs> those others in their family who are like struggling with it, you know, I think it works out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm just so grateful that everybody in the end, you know, came together and we uh, will at some point attach some uh, video of the wedding. Yeah, we got married. I think you guys know that. We got yeah, married just we got uh, married on yeah, July 16th. Yeah, just a couple weeks ago now. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. We had family and friends and it was just uh and neighbors and yeah, it was just really really a gl glorious fun celebration. We can't wait to share some some videos and 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 pictures of that with you. Yeah. So, if you enjoyed this content, please like the video and share it with somebody who is considering getting back into the dating pool and we hope you feel loved and hopeful until we see you again all right see you later hopeful tribe bye thank you today that brew of filipino wellies stands as a symbol of that ingenuity and the joining of dev and sue as family